me again, your student nurse for today, Camille Rosaliano. And now, I will be continuing to talk about the head to toe assessment for the neck and thorax. First, let's go to the neck. First, you'll assess the neck, beginning with inspection. The patient's neck should hold his head erect and midline. It should have symmetrical and no swelling or masses. If you see swelling below the jaw angle, palpate this area to check for a parotid gland problem. Now, assess the next active range of motion by having the patient touch his chin to his chest, turn his red to the right and left, tip his head toward his right shoulder and left shoulder, and tilt his head backward. All of these movements should be smooth and painless. Next, assess the spinal accessory nerve. Apply resistance to the patient's shoulders as he shrugs them. The shoulder muscles should be symmetrical and be able to overcome the resistance. Now, have the patient turn his head to one side as you apply resistance to the side of his chin, then have him turn his head to the other side as you apply resistance to the opposite side of the chin. Note the contraction of the opposite sternal mastoid muscle and the force of the movement against your hand. Movement should be equally strong. Next, move on to the limp nodes in the neck. With the finger pads of both hands, bilaterally palpate the nodes using a circular motion. Palpate the lymph nodes in the sequence. Preauricular, posterior auricular, occipital, submental, submandibular, tonsillar, superficial cervical, deep cervical chain, posterior cervical, and supraclavicular. Note the size and shape consistency, mobility, and tenderness of the nodes. Be sure to compare one side to the other. Normally, the lymph nodes are small, soft, non-tender, and movable. If you detect swelling or tenderness, search for a possible cause. Now, inspect the jugular veins using tangential lightning. I mean lightning. With the patient's supine and his head elevated 30 degrees and turned away from you, internal jugular vein distension may be visible. Observe the jugular vein pulsations. They should undulate softly and may decrease with inspiration. Note unusual prominent pulsations. Since we don't have tangent, tangent child lighting, we just use the normal lighting in the house. Now, with the patient sitting up, identify the trache trachea by locating the sternal notch and sliding your fingers to each side of it. The trachea should be midline and symmetrical. Stand in front of the patient. Use the fingers of your left hand to push the thyroid gland to the right. Curve the fingers of your right hand between the trachea and the sternal clay domastoid muscle. Then, ask the patient to extend his neck and swallows. You should feel the thyroid move up and down as he swallows. Then, palpate the thyroid gland from behind. Place the fingers of both hands on the patient's neck with your index fingers just below the cricoid. Palpate both lobes and the isthmus. Instruct the patient to sip and swallow during the exam. Note the size, shape, and consistency of the thyroid. If the thyroid is enlarged, auscultate it for bruin with the bell of your stethoscope. A bruin is a blowing sound caused by turbulent blood flow. Next, observe the carotid arteries for visible pulsations. Gently palpate the carotid arteries using your index and middle fingers. Remember to palpate one carotid artery at a time. Otherwise, you could block the flow of the blood to the brain. Don't press too hard over the carotid sinus area located higher in the neck because this could cause vagal stimulation which could slow the patient's heart rate. Next, have the patient take a deep breath and hold it as you listen to the car carotid artery with the bell of your stethoscope. You should not hear a buoy. Now, let's begin in assessing the thorax, the respiration system. To assess the thorax, ask the patient to breathe normally as you observe his respirations. 
The respiration should be regular and symmetrical and the accessory muscles should not be used. The patient should breathe comfortably while sitting with his arms at rest. Now, move around slowly to the patient's back. As you do this, assess the anteroposterior and lateral diameters of the thorax. Still standing behind the patient, use your finger pads to palpate the spinous processes. They should be evenly spaced and non-tender. Next, assess respiratory expansion. To do this, place your thumbs at the level of T10 or the 10th thoracic vertebra. Spread your fingers, allowing for small folds of skin between your thumbs. Ask the patient to take deep, slow breaths. As he does, watch your thumbs move with respiration. Next, assess for tactile firmitus or voice sounds palpated on the chest wall surface. Use the ball of your hand. Feel for vibrations as the patient repeats the phrase 99. Move from the, from the apices inside the scapula down to the lower and lateral thorax. In each location, you should feel equal vibrations. Now, perform mediate percussion using a systematic pattern so you can compare the two sides. You should hear dullness over the diaphragm. Now, assess diaph diaphragmatic exertion. To do this, ask the patient to exhale and then hold his breath. As he holds his breath, percuss from the scapula down to where the sound changes from resonance to dullness. Now, ask the patient to inhale deep and hold his breath as you percuss further down to the new area of, dark, of dullness. Next, assess the kidneys using blunt or fist percussion over the cost of vertebral angle. Percussion in this area should not cause tenderness. Finally, auscultate breath sounds with the diaphragm of your stethoscope. To do this, instruct the patient to, drip, to, breath, to breathe deeply through his mouth. Through starting at lung apices, auscultate the lungs move systematically from side to side down the patient's back and laterally towards the axilla. Normal breath, normal breath sounds vary with the area you are assessing. Listen for abnormal sounds such as crackles and wheezes and for coughing and abnormal respiratory effort. If you hear crackles or wheezes, ask the patient to cough then listen again to determine if the abnormal sounds have cleared. If you suspect an abnormality, have the patient say 99 as you auscultate these areas. Normally, the sound is muffled and indistinct. To assess the patient's anterior thorax, begin with the bone and muscles. Normally, they appear symmetrical and you should not see accessory use, retractions, or bulges. Next, palpate the thorax with your finger pads moving from the long apices to the bases. You should find no nodules and tenderness. To assess respiratory expansion, place your hands on the patient's chest along the coastal margins with your thumbs pointing toward the siphoid process. Now assess for tactile firmitus as the patient repeats the phrases 99. Next, perform percussion over the lungs using a systematic approach. Start just above the clavicle and percuss in the intercostal spaces down the chest from side to side. Percussion should produce low resonant sounds. Then, auscultate over the patient's lungs with the diaphragm of the stethoscope in the same pattern you used for a percussion. Expect to hear vesicular sounds over the most of the anterior thorax and the periphery. If you suspect an abnormality, have the patient say 99 several times as you auscultate the areas involved. Normally, the word sound is muffled and indistinct. 